Hi, this is Dan Heisman, and this is our Improve Your Chess series here on YouTube. I'm glad to be back. Uh, I had to take a few weeks off for an upper respiratory problem, which is not 100% cleared up yet, but let's give it a go here. Okay, I thought I'd do something straightforward, like let's go over some of the most famous opening traps. What are they? Well, let's start with Legal's mate. Legal's mate is a, in the Philidor's defense, e4, e5, knight f3, d6. Okay, now here the most common move, and the best move according to the computers and the grandmasters, is d4, so that's the move you should play. But in order to get Legal's mate, you have to play the second most popular move, which is bishop to c4. And now in order to fall into Legal's mate, black has to make a couple of pretty bad moves. So what you see beginners play here a lot is the weird move h6. Why do they do that? Well, the reason they do that is they've played this before and they played the more natural move knight f6 and then they get embarrassed by the move knight g5 when it's difficult to defend the pawn on f7. So they figure, well, maybe before I bring the knight out I should stop him from doing that. So they play this terrible move h6. If you actually wanted to stop knight to g5, the better way to do it would be to simply play bishop e7 first. Now, of course, he can't play knight g5, and if he castles, and now you play knight f6, now knight g5 doesn't work because black will simply castle. Okay, so black plays this terrible move h6, and now white plays the developing move knight c3, and now we need another bad move for black. Black will play bishop to g4. Why is this a bad move? Well, it's a bad move because it falls into the trap, but also it's a bad move because it violates a whole bunch of opening principles like knights before bishops, don't put your pieces on unguarded squares, LPDO, uh, develop the pieces on the side you want to castle first, all those kind of things. Lasker's principle is don't pin the knight to the queen before the opponent has castled. It violates all of these. So you fall into a trap. Well, what's, what is a trap? Let me take the lines off the board. A trap is a move that looks somewhat reasonable, but falls for a tactical device and ends up losing material or getting checkmated. That's different than the earlier video I did on inaccuracies, where inaccuracies are also moves that look reasonable, but they turn out to be second-rate moves. Here, the moves are, more, are worse than second-rate. They're actually falling into some sort of trap where bad things are going to happen to you. You're not just going to get a a bad game, you'll get a lost game. So a trap is a set of opening moves where the side that falls into the trap makes superficially reasonable looking moves, but they're tactically unjustified. So here, the way that white can beat bishop to g4 is to play knight takes e5 and move that pin knight. So black has two options here. Black can simply take the knight, in which case white will take the bishop, queen takes g4, and now white is ahead a pawn. He has the bishop pair, he has three pieces out, and black has zero. So white's pretty much winning this position. If both sides played perfectly here, we'd expect white to win. All right, but what happens if he takes the queen, which of course is the main line? And now we get the very pretty sequence, bishop takes f7 check. I've actually had students here try knight takes f7. And I said, why would you give up a queen just so you can fork a queen and a rook? It doesn't make sense. So what you are doing is simply playing bishop takes f7 check. His only legal move is king e7. And now we have the very pretty knight d5 mate, legal's mate. So let's go through that again. Anytime you have an opening sequence, you want to play it over again so that you can burn it into your memory. So e4, e5, knight f3, d6, bishop c4. Now we need a bad move like h6. Good moves here will stop the trap, of course. Knight c3, another bad move, bishop g4. Knight takes e5, bishop takes d1, bishop takes f7 check, king e7, knight d5 checkmate. Okay, the next trap I think about when I think about common traps is the Petrov trap. The Petrov trap is e4, e5, knight f3, knight f6, 
This is the Petrov's defense. And now the main line is knight takes e5. And now, of course, black needs to win the pawn back. And the right way to do that is to attack the knight and then take the pawn. But suppose you're a beginner and you don't know you need to attack the knight first. And you say, why can't I just take the pawn right away? How can white punish this? And the answer is white should play queen to e2. Now black's got a big problem. The basic idea of the problem is shown in the line where he just retreats the knight. If he brings the knight back to f6, white plays knight c6 discover check. Black is in check, and he only has a few ways to get out of check, but every way that he gets out of check allows white to take the queen on the next move. For instance, queen e7, knight takes e7, or bishop e7, knight takes d8. All right, so let's go back. e4, e5, knight f3, knight f6, knight takes e5, knight takes e4, queen e2. So black can't move the knight. So what can he do? Well, let's say he tries to save the knight with d5. Then what white should do is just drive the knight away with d6, d3. And now if knight f6, then white has the same knight c6 check winning the queen. So what else could black do? Well, black could counterattack the knight Suppose he plays something like bishop d6. Wait to play and win. If you, if you don't, can't see it, you might want to pause the video to see if you can find the win here. The answer is extremely simple. White should simply save his knight. And once he saves the knight, the black knight is pinned to the king, and white will win a knight for a pawn. So that doesn't work. What's the best black can do here? Well, the best he can do is to play queen to e7. Now if the knight move, white moves the knight, black will simply move his knight, because he's not pinned anymore, and save the piece. So what white should do here is take the knight, d takes e4, queen takes e5, and now e takes d5, winning a pawn. So the best black can do there is lose a pawn. There's another way black can just lose a pawn e4, e5, knight f3, knight f6, knight takes e5, knight takes e4, question mark, queen e2. He could play queen e7 right away, and after queen takes e4, he can play d6 to try to win the pin knight. White will play d4. If black plays f6, white could play something like f4, and white's going to end up winning a pawn. So if black plays perfectly in the Petrov trap, He'll only lose a pawn, and if he plays it wrong, he could lose a knight or even lose a queen for a knight. So that's the Petrov trap. Okay, let's talk about the Cambridge Springs trap. My son fell for this Cambridge Springs trap once or twice when he was a low-rated player. So white plays d4, black plays d5, white plays the queen's gambit, c4, and black plays the queen's gambit declined to e6. White plays the main move, knight c3. Black plays the main move, knight f6. And white plays the main move, bishop to g5. Okay, black has several ways of playing against this. He can play it as a queen's gambit decline with bishop e7. He could try to transpose into a semi-slav with c6. Or he can play the Cambridge Springs, knight bd7. He could even play something like bishop b4, trying to transpose into a sort of a Rogozin system. The reason why bishop b4 works is because after queen a4 check, knight c6 holds, holds the bishop. But anyway, bishop b4, a very rare move there. Knight bd7, Cambridge Springs. Now it looks like this pawn is attacked twice, and even though it looks like it's guarded twice, it also looks like it's really only guarded once because the knight on f6 is pinned. So the trap is for white to believe that he can take the pawn. C takes D, E takes D, and now the bad move, Knight takes D5. And now black will surprise white with the surprising move, Knight takes D5. Sort of like Legal's mate, where the pinned Knight is pinned to the Queen, not to the King, and therefore it can move. And now black is up a piece. The only way for white to get any material would be to try Bishop takes D8. But now comes Bishop to B4 check, which is the point. White has no legal move other than to put his queen in the way. 
Here I see a lot of low rated players take the queen right away, but there's no rush. The queen is pinned. So it actually is slightly more accurate to simply play king takes d8. And when the smoke clears here, let's say e4, trying to remove the guard on the bishop. Bishop takes d2 check, king takes d2, knight f6, and black is up a piece for a pawn. Okay, let's do that one more time. d4, d5, c4, e6, knight c3, knight f6, bishop g5, knight bd7. So here white should play something like either e3 or knight f3. Instead, if c takes d, e takes d, which is okay, but knight takes d5, which is losing, to knight takes d5. And if bishop takes d8, bishop b4 check, queen d2, and now let's say king d8. And when the smoke clears, black will be up a piece for a pawn. Okay, let's look at a trap in the French defense. This is featured in the first page of the seventh chapter of Bain's book on discovered attacks. So let's play the advanced variation. And black plays queen b6. And white plays bishop d3. And now it looks like black's got the deep pawn attack three times. And it's only guarded twice. But black can't take the pawn. If he does, he's falling into a trap, which is, as I said, the first puzzle in the chapter on discovered attacks. Knight takes, queen takes, and now the queen is hanging. We can move the bishop with check, bishop b5 check, bishop d7. And now I've seen, again, a lot of low-rated players play queen takes d4 instantly. Well, that wins, of course. But why not win an extra bishop by first saving your bishop with bishop takes d7 check, king takes d7, and now queen takes d4, <clears throat> and you're up an entire queen for a pawn. All right, let's go through that again. e4, e6, d4, d5, e5. Some of these traps can be seen in other variations where like in the French, you could get to a very, very similar position. So this is called the milner barry gambit, bishop d3. But it's only a gambit if black plays it correctly with bishop d7. Pawn takes, pawn takes, knight takes, double question mark, knight takes, queen takes, double question mark, bishop checks, bishop d7, and now the correct move, bishop takes d7 check, king takes, queen takes d4. Okay, famous trap in the French. Uh, let's look at the fried liver. The fried liver is actually a trap. It's a line in the two knights defense. e4, e5, knight f3, knight c6. We might have mentioned this before in the earlier video. Bishop c4, knight f6, knight g5, d5, e takes d5. And now the best move, which almost no beginner ever finds, because it's not a very natural move, is knight to a5, with pretty much full equality for black if you know both sides are computers, so to speak. But the move that I played into and a lot of people play into here the first time they see this is to play knight takes d5 question mark. That's not even the second or third best move in the position. And now computers have pretty much proven that although the lolly is good and dangerous for white, the fried liver attack, knight takes f7, is the better idea. In fact, I wrote an article about this that got published in Chess Life and in New in Chess yearbook. So after knight takes f7, forking the queen and the rook, black plays king takes, white plays queen check, and now black has to guard the knight. If he goes back, it's completely terrible. If he goes this way, in fact, it's mate, queen takes d5 check, Queen takes d5, bishop takes d5 check, bishop e6, bishop takes e6 checkmate. But instead, black should guard the knight. Knight f3, knight c6, bishop c4, knight f6, knight g5, d5, e takes d5, knight takes d5, question mark. Knight takes f7, 
King takes f7. This knight takes f7 move is called the fried liver attack. Queen f3 check. King e6 to guard the knight. Knight c3 to attack the pin knight. Knight on 6 to b4. Knight, knight on 6 to e7 is even worse. And now the computer says that either bishop to b3 or castles gives white a very, very strong attack. Very difficult to play for black. So thanks to computers, we now know that those are the best moves. For a long time, um, white played moves here like queen to e4, or even a3, knight takes c2 check, king d1, knight d4 was a main line for a long time. But now we know that bishop b3 or castles are very, very strong for white. All right, let's do that one more time. For our liver attack, e4, e5, knight f3, knight c6, bishop c4 is called the Italian, knight f6 is called the two knights defense, knight g5 is the main line, d5 is the main defense, he takes d5, and now the main line is knight to a5. Second best move might be knight to d4. Third best move is b5, which Hans Berliner used to beat Estrin for the 69 World Correspondence Championship. Knight takes d5, question mark, knight f7, king f7, queen f3 check, king e6, knight c3, knight on 6 to b4, and now let's say bishop to b3 with a big attack for white. Computer says white has a pretty big advantage. The next trap we're gonna talk about is the Noah's Ark trap. And what's interesting about the Noah's Ark trap is that there's many, many cases where you can do something similar to a bishop, which we call Noah's Arking a bishop. And a lot of people all call all these things a Noah's Ark trap, but there's really only one Noah's Ark trap and all the rest are just Noah's Ark patterns. And I'll show you what I mean in a minute. All right, so Noah's Ark trap, e4, e5, knight f3, knight c6, bishop b5, Roy Lopez, a6, Morphy's move, bishop a4, main line, and now d6, modern Steinitz. And now white should not play d4. He can, but it's not the main line. He has to be very careful here. So black can play b5, bishop b3, e takes d4, and now white should gambit the pawn with c3 with some compensation. If he plays knight takes d4 question mark, now he's falling into the Noah's Ark trap. So the Noah's Ark trap is knight takes, queen takes, c5. Here white has two possibilities. If he tries bishop takes f7 check, then king takes f7 check, queen d5 check, hitting the rook and the king doesn't work because bishop to e6 and the queen guards the rook. So the main line is queen to d5, threatening mate and threatening the rook. And now black plays bishop to e6, stopping the mate and guarding the rook. If white makes any move other than queen c6 check, black will play c4, trapping the bishop. So queen c6 check. And now black plays bishop to d7, hitting the queen. And white says, gee, I guess I should get a draw and repeat the position with queen d5. And black says, not so fast. My rook's now guarded. If I stop the mate, that's all I need to do. And he plays c4, winning the bishop for two pawns. This is the Noah's Ark trap. So let's do that again. Slow motion, instant replay. e4, e5, knight f3, knight c6, bishop b5, a6, bishop a4, d6, and now d4, a plausible move, probably not the best, not terrible, but commit yourself to a gambit, b5, bishop b3, e takes d4, and now white should not play knight takes d4. Knight takes d4, falling into the trap, knight takes d4, queen takes d4, c5, queen d5, Bishop e6, queen c6 check, bishop d7, queen d5, c4, winning the bishop. This kind of winning the bishop on the side of the board we call Noah's Arking the bishop, based on this Noah's Ark trap. The other ways you would win the bishop when you do this wouldn't necessarily be a Noah's Ark trap. For instance, suppose someone is playing the 
Rosalimo variation of the Sicilian. And black plays the unusual move a6. White should take the knight here. This is not the Roy Lopez. Suppose white thinks this is similar to the Roy Lopez and plays bishop a4. Well, now black doesn't have to do anything fancy at all. Simply b5, bishop b3, c4. This is not the Noah's Ark trap, but we do call this Noah's Arking the bishop, and black would win the bishop. So this can come up in any kind of uh, many different openings where you can trap the bishop along the side of the board if he's not careful. So again, we call those Noah's Arking the bishop based on the Noah's Ark trap, but the Noah's Ark trap is what I showed you first. The next trap we're going to look at is Damiano's defense. The entire defense is a trap. e4, e5, knight f3. So let's say you're playing someone who's not very good, and they play f6. Okay, well that's already a bad move, but the best way to refute knight f6 is to play, sorry, f6, is to play knight takes e5. That looks like it's not safe, but of course that's why it's a trap. If black does nothing here, let's say he plays a silly move like a6, you could actually now play queen h5 check. This is a very good pattern to know. I wouldn't call this an opening trap. This is just an opening tactics pattern. And now when they play g6, you've got a sneaky pin. You play knight takes g6 and win material. So after e4, e5, knight f3, f6, knight takes e5, of course, almost everybody's going to play f takes e5. And now you're still going to get queen h5 check in. And again, g6 doesn't work. This time because queen takes e5 check, double attacks the king and the rook. So therefore, most people are going to play king e7. Then queen takes e5 check, king f7, and now bishop c4 check. Okay, here black has to be wise enough to sacrifice a pawn with d5. If he doesn't and he simply moves the king, this game is over. Queen f5 check, king h6, d4 discovered check or d3, g5 only legal move, and now h4, threatening both h takes g5 and bishop takes g5, and there's no defense. For instance, Bishop e7, h takes g5, double check, king g7, queen f7, checkmate. Okay, so after e4, e5, knight f3, f6, knight takes e5. By the way, the best move here is queen e7, but black's still in some trouble. f takes e5, queen h5, check, king e7, queen takes e5, check, king f7, bishop c4 check, black's best move is d5. What does that do? It opens up the line for the bishop so that when the king goes to g6, white does not have this queen to f5 check move. However, white does have a little trappy move here. He can play bishop takes b7. And black's in trouble. Black can no, cannot play bishop take bishop b7 because queen f5 check king h6, d3, g5, h4, wins again. Now there's no mate on f7 here, but still, let's say black plays bishop e7. We'll let the computer tell me. I'll put the computer's analysis on the screen for you. All right, Mr. Computer. Got to move the whole window up for a second just to get this engine started. Okay, let's bring it back to its normal size. Okay. All right, so the computer says that after bishop e7, white's best move is the non-check queen f7, threatening pawn takes discovered mate, and it gives bishop b4 check Knight c3, bishop takes c3, b takes c3, queen e7, h takes g5, mate. Let's do that again. e4, e5, knight f3, f6, knight takes e5, f takes e5, not the best move, but the most common one. Queen h5, check, king e7, queen takes e5, check, king f7, 
bishop c4 check, d5, bishop takes d5 check, king g6, and I just played bishop takes b7. As you can see, Stockfish is now saying you could even play h4 first, and if he tries to give himself a place to go with h6, now you can play bishop takes b7. So that's probably a more accurate move, move order. Now, obviously, bishop takes b7, queen f5 is made immediately. What if black had played h5? Instead, well, still bishop takes b7. He can't take because of queen checks followed by pawn checks. Bishop d6, queen a5, knight c6, bishop takes c6, rook b8, knight c3, and white has winning material here. Okay, so e4, e5, knight f3, f6, knight takes e5, f takes, queen check. These are good patterns to know. King e7, queen h e5, king f7, bishop c4 check, d5, bishop takes d5, king g6, and computer says it's not, not correct to take right away. It's not as accurate. It's much better to play h4. Okay, so there's always these, we don't need the computer anymore. There's always these little nuances. So h4 first, and then if he tries to give himself a way out, bishop takes b7. Okay, so these are some of the tr famous traps in chess. Today we've covered Legal's mate. We covered the Petrov's trap. This is Damiano's. We looked at the fried liver. We looked at Cambridge Springs. We looked at the Noah's Ark trap. And we looked at the famous black can't take on d4 discovered attack in the French defense. Okay, there's a lot more opening traps. These are some of the most famous, but we thought it'd be a little fun putting them all together in one video. Glad to be back. Probably won't be able to make four or five videos in a week for a while, but uh, one or two should be good enough. If you haven't seen some of the other videos, you can subscribe to the channel, Dan Heisman Chess. Glad to have you. See you next time. Bye.